So in this segment, we're going to be talking about why there are effectively so many channel crossings and this Tory MP sticking it to um, swell a brave man over it and kind of explaining why, in a sense, a lot of people don't have a choice depending on where they're from, unless they're from one of three war-torn countries that the, the UK wishes to help. Um, so yeah, let's have, a, let's have a listen to this. Old orphan from an East African <laughs> country escaping a war zone and uh, religious persecution. And I have a, uh, a sibling legally in the United Kingdom at the moment. What is the safe and legal route for me to come to the United Kingdom? So this could be one of the reasons why someone would want to seek refuge in the UK. They might have a relative here. In this case, he's saying a sibling. Um, it might be for language reasons as well, because English is so uh, widely spoken. So he set the stage here really well. Let's see what Braveman comes out with. Um, well, we have... Uh, you're fleeing which country, sorry? Any African country. Any African country. Well... be any continent, but let's say any African country. I don't want to name one because then their Prime Minister might have a go at me for demonising their population. So let's just theoretically talk about an African country which is going through a period of turbulence and which is persecuting its citizens, including an innocent 16-year-old like me. <laughs> Sorry, it's just kind of... The, the way he's kind of joking about it, like, I'm a 16-year-old, what can I do? Um, the fact that, you know, the, the Alba I think it was the Alba Albanian leader came out and said, stop demonising the people of Albania. And so that's one of the reasons why he's, you know, saying not mentioning a country. He could he could easily mention one or two, but, you know, cause there are many kind of war-torn countries around the world, but he's choosing not to, which is cool. I respect it. Well, we have um, uh, an asylum system, and people can put in applications oh. for asylum. How would I do that? And that that's great, because he's got it now. Instead of just jumping on to the next question, he's saying, how can I do this? And this, he's forcing Braveman to explain the process, which I, I, I genuinely love the fact that he's done this. Well, you can, um, uh, you can, you can do it uh, through the safe and legal routes that we, we have. We, we, we have, have offered 390,000 places uh, to people seeking safety from various countries around the world. Well, I'm not Syrian, um, I'm not uh, Afghan, I'm not uh, Ukrainian, I'm not any of those specific <coughs> schemes. The Dub scheme uh, is historic. What scheme's open to me? I think we might have a separate scheme for people from Hong Kong as well, but he's, he's mentioned three there. I think it was Ukraine, Syria, and Afghanistan. So I think Hong Kong might be another exemption, but, you know, he's not mentioned Hong Kong. He's talking about specifically uh, a mythical East African country. So, again, he's done a lot better than most journalists would do here. Well, if you are able to get to the UK, you are able to put in an application for asylum. Here we go. I would only enter the UK illegally then, wouldn't I? Well, that, that would, if you put in your application for asylum... Uh, upon arrival, that would uh, be the, the process that you enter. How could how, how, he's going to ask the great question now. Do I arrive in the UK if I didn't have permission to get onto an aircraft? The, the, the process We're going to go back, just, just have a listen, but this is important. The process that you enter. How could I arrive in the UK if I didn't have permission to get onto an aircraft legally to arrive in the UK? Uh, let me just invite... Oh, let me just let me just invite. Oh, let me duck the question. Oh, she ain't got an answer, has she? She ain't got an answer. The, the answer is if you can't come here by plane, we're an island, so you can't really swim here. That's incredibly dangerous. And even then, you're still doing the same thing as the channel crossings. So the answer is you have to come here, quote illegally. It's not illegal to seek refuge in a country. But the way he set it up is perfect. He's saying I've got a sibling here, so they've got a reason to come to England, specifically over any other um, safe country that they may have passed through, because they're going to have someone who can help look after them. Potentially, Our colleagues, if there's anything they want to add. I mean, you, you, uh, 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 this, this guy's great because he's just, you know, he's fumbling all over the place, no idea what to say, um, and it's just, it's just phenomenal because he, he comes up with an answer and then he takes it back. You could engage with UNHCR. I mean, depending which country you're from, you could engage with UNHCR, and that would be a way of of uh, of, um, of, uh, of <coughs> getting um, leave to enter the UK in order to put in an asylum claim. But I accept that there are some countries where that would not be possible. I think the point is that if you're a war-torn country, most likely you will very much struggle to contact the UNHCR. And where would you stay in the meantime? Would you stay in, would you have to flee your country and go to another safe country, which that country may not be happy about, because that's the whole point of this? Um, what would you do in the meantime? Where would you seek refuge? Would it be in one of the camps in a neighbouring country, etc.? You know, that, that's the whole point of this. There's a shortage of safe and legal routes other than for 
specific groups of people that there isn't there isn't just a shortage there aren't any if you're not from those specific countries and i think including hong kong hong kong would be the only other one the only way to seek refuge in the uk is by getting to the uk you have to be in the uk to claim refuge the only way to get here because you can't use a plane because the um, you'll get checked by border staff and they will say oh uh, but uh, border staff at the airport you're leaving from, not the one you're arriving to, and they'll say, "Oh, where's your where's your papers? Where's your visa, etc." And you say, oh, "I haven't got one. I'm going to seek refuge in the UK." And like, you can't do that. You know, it, it's just it's just ridiculous um, that Braverman has basically been broken down by one of our own her own MPs, and he's just asked really simple questions of, "Okay, if this is the process, can you talk me through it?" That's all journalists have to do for some of the stuff. And, you know, he's absolutely pants Braverman, and she's got nothing. She's absolutely got nothing. The way she chokes here, right, um, she tries to throw this guy under the bus, um, is just insane. You know, she's got nothing. One absolute coward. Uh, let me just invite other colleagues if there's anything they want to add. I mean, I mean she just panicked, because she had no answer, because she knew the answer is they have to come get to the UK by any means. And that would mean by illegal methods, at least she would say. But um, just ridiculous, honestly. <sighs> just... Uh, at least at least admit who you are at, at least say like yeah there's no entry point but i guess she can't admit it because then she justifies people's actions at that point the people she's trying to demonize but anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on patreon if you can and if the uk wanted to resolve this issue we'd create safe points of entry and we would set up the processing center in france